Hey folks, I'm Nate. I'm a technical marketing manager with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And today I'm here to talk a little bit about the cloud. So sometimes deploying RHEL on the cloud can be a little bit confusing. There's lots of options. There's lots of ways in which you may get a hold of RHEL. There's lots of ways in which you might pay for RHEL, or at least there's a couple ways in which you may pay for RHEL. So this video is intended to sort of demystify that a little bit, at least for some very common use cases. Like, how do I just go to the AWS console and stand up a RHEL machine and understand where it's coming from and how to use it? There's some choices you're going to want to make, like, do you want to pay for RHEL using a, your own subscription that you have from Red Hat, or do you want to pay for RHEL on a per-hour basis, right? So you can deploy in a pay-as-you-go model or as a bring-your-own subscription model. There's also the question of where am I getting RHEL from? Am I going through a third party? or am I getting it directly from a supported vendor like Amazon Web Services or Red Hat? So we're going to talk a little bit about that, and I'm literally going to walk you through the wizard about how you configure a RHEL instance, and then give you some specifics on how you might connect to it once it's up and running. So stick with me. If you'd like to see a video on how to deploy a custom RHEL image using the Red Hat Insights Image Builder to AWS, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to another demo video that I've done that does exactly that. So check that out if that's what you're looking for. But if you're here to see how to deploy RHEL right from the launch wizard, stick around. Okay, so here we are. I've logged into my Amazon AWS dashboard. Uh, I'm already looking at my EC2 dashboard. You may not be brought to this uh, screen immediately, depending on how you have your particular console configured. Uh, if that's the case, if you click on the services button up here at the top, you should be able to find EC2. Obviously, these are my recently visited, but if you scroll through this list, you should find EC2 in that list. So just get to your EC2 console and we'll start from here. All right, so they make it relatively simple. I like to go to the instances list here and then from here, click the launch instances button. But there's a number of ways that you can get to the same launch wizard, but we're going to go from here. All right, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, most cloud providers are designed to be pretty simple and straightforward. And to be honest, Amazon is one of the most mature platforms uh, out there, simply because they've been around for quite a while. So we're going to give our system a name. Pretty creative name there. Now you can see right here in this list of uh, quick start images, there is Red Hat. If you click on Red Hat, it lets you pick what version of RHEL you want to deploy. Now, this is what we generally refer to as a console or quick start image. Uh, you can pick one of the items in this list here, but what you've also got access to is the marketplace. So if you click on this browse more AMIs button, they'll bring you to a more, uh, thorough list of options that you could deploy on AWS. And in this case, if we go on over to AWS Marketplace and we search for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it should show us a list of everything that matches that search term, right? The ones at the top here, you can see they say Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, 7, and they say buy Amazon Web Services. These are the official uh, RHEL images in the marketplace. If you scroll a little bit down, you should start to see third-party providers, right? We've got RHEL 8 with support from supported images. We've got Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 from Pro Computers, right? These are just examples. These are images that are coming from a third party probably a partner of Red Hat's. And basically what this means is instead of paying Red Hat directly for uh, these images, you'll be going through a third party, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a thing that you should be aware of. Now, if you deploy one of the official images right here, even the ones that are listed as Amazon Web Services, these will deploy what's called a pay-as-you-go instance. And a pay-as-you-go instance is exactly what it sounds like. You pay for the usage of RHEL on AWS, right? You don't have to have a direct contract or a direct relationship with Red Hat. All right, so from here, we're gonna use the RHEL 9 deployment here. Gives us an idea of what it's gonna cost per hour. We click continue. 
and it should bring us back to the launch wizard. Now, if I had chosen one of those quick starts, it's a very similar process from here on, right? We've already got an image selected. If I went back to quick start and selected Red Hat and picked Rail 9 from here, very similar situation, right? It's just telling it what image to lay down inside of our instance. So now that you've chosen RHEL as your platform of choice on your cloud provider, you may not realize that RHEL comes with a lot of extra services that you're entitled to simply by having a RHEL subscription. That includes if you have a pay-as-you-go subscription. Just because you're paying for RHEL through your cloud provider doesn't mean you get any less value out of RHEL. After all, RHEL is more than just a Linux kernel with support behind it. You also get access to Red Hat Insights. There's also a number of other tools that you're going to want to understand and know how to use in order to fully get the most value out of your RHEL subscription. In the description of this video, I'm going to put a link to a blog that coincidentally I wrote about all of the extra value that you can get even as a tenant in the cloud on top of RHEL. You should head on over to red.ht slash RHEL dash cloud start for more information. All right, so the rest of this wizard is actually relatively simple. We can choose what size instance we want to run. It picked M5 large out of the box, probably because that's the default for uh, the marketplace image that I had chosen. We can go smaller, and that'll directly impact how much you're going to pay per hour for your, for your system. You need to pick what key pair you want to deploy on the VM. And when I say key pair, I mean SSH keys, okay? So when an instance is deployed, it's going to, by default, uh, deploy a, uh, an EC2 user. And that EC2 user is going to have an SSH key assigned to it, a public key. You'll be able to then connect to your instance using that user with that SSH key, right? So that's important. If you put one in here that you don't actually have access to the key, or if you don't put one in, I don't think it'll let you finish it if you don't have one, um, then you won't be able to access your instance, and that's probably a bad thing. You can also generate a new key pair right from here, which is another way to go. If you don't, if any, if the key pairs that are in this list are not familiar to you, you want to generate a new one and make sure you download the private key when you're done. So we're going to pick one. Let's see here. I think this is my most recent. We'll use that one. Now for a security group, this is essentially like a firewall rule. This tells EC2 what ports to make available on your instance once it's deployed. Uh, in this case, uh, we can make a new security group and then it'll ask us, you know, what ports do we want to have open? Or we can use an existing security group. You can see I've got a bunch of launch wizard security groups already in here. We're going to use SSH only. And this is a security group that I've already defined that only opens up SSH. You can configure the additional storage you want to add. And there are other options if you expand a number of these, uh, like the advanced details here and whatnot. We're not going to really go into that because there are specifics based on what kind of workload you're going to be running. And to be honest, I just don't have a workload. This is an example. So I'm trying to get through, you know, just the basics so that you can have an idea of how to find and deploy RHEL on the cloud. Okay, now we click launch instance. And what this is going to do is it's going to literally launch the instance. It's going to take that image that we picked. It's going to deploy that as the disk image. It's going to attach CPU memory, whatever to that. And it's going to run the thing, give it an IP address and tell us how to access it when we're done. You can see here that it's already initialized. This will give us an idea of the tasks that it completed. If we go back to instances. There it is on our list already. There's rel. Uh, you can see that it's listed as pending. So at this point, what we have to do is just kind of wait a little while and it'll come back with a running instance. All right, so here we are. We're still at the instances list. You can see that my instance is now running. The instance state says running. Now the instance state doesn't necessarily mean that the VM is ready yet or the instance is ready for you to connect to. It just means that it has a process running, right? This status check where it says checks have passed, that means that it's up and running. Now, if you want to connect to your instance, if you bring up the instance ID and click on this connect button, go to the SSH client tab. It'll give you directions on how you can actually SSH in and get a console on your system. And then what you should find is a pretty clean and empty RHEL 9 system set up and ready for you to use. All right, so there you go. Now you've seen how to properly deploy, or at least how you might deploy a simple 
rel instance on Amazon Web Services. And I hope you found this informative. Uh, I hope that next time you go to deploy rel in the cloud, you have a few less questions. Thanks for watching the video, and like I said, if you'd like to see a video on how to deploy a custom rel image that was generated by the Red Hat Insights Image Builder, check out the link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.